The WTO Congress on Gender seeks to spotlight research on how trade interacts with economic and social opportunities for women, to showcase new research initiatives, and to promote innovative work in the field of trade and gender. The economic and social costs of gender inequality today are enormous. Earlier this year, the World Bank estimated that 2.4 billion working-age women do not have equal economic opportunities compared to men. The gap between expected lifetime earnings for men and women globally is $172 trillion. Yes, $172 trillion. That's nearly double the entire world's annual GDP. We need to act, and we need to act now. Closing gender gaps would yield major economic returns. One of the things that we've seen over the last two years in terms of women, how they have been disproportionately affected by COVID, has kind of just put in very stark relief what lack of inclusion has done and how quickly gains can be undone in a simple two-year period. And therefore, to ensure that it is more embedded, that it actually can be maintained and sustained, we have to be more proactive and deliberate about putting in place women's policies that help women in international trade, policies that enable women to access finance, policies that actually support the inclusion of women in, in global value chains. We all know that crises are not gender neutral. We all know that. And yet, every crisis we you know, assess the impact of women and say, you know, women and girls are disproportionately affected. A new crisis comes and we, we still don't have uh, the protection measures and the policies in place to avoid the impact that we already know that is going to cause on women and girls. If we don't come all to the table and bring and all contribute, meaning private sector, government, international organizations, academia, civil society, uh, that, that's the only way we see that all the work that we do at WTO and all the work that we do within our, our free trade agreement is going to translate in more opportunities for women and men. We need to make sure we're not just churning out information, but that what we are churning out is, um, is useful. So as an example, one of the things that we do in the UK is uh, gender pay gap reporting. And many people don't understand what gender, gender pay gap reporting is. They think it's just looking at uh, whether men are being paid more than women. But it's about looking at the, uh, the makeup of your workforce. Which jobs are people doing? And this is what looking at things through a gender lens means. It doesn't just mean putting the word gender inside the, the, the existing statement that you had. It means thinking genuinely about what are we doing? How does this impact the lives of women? One of the biggest challenges I have with trade agreements, having negotiated several of them, is that unless they're translated into practical, applicable, they're just nice pieces of paper that trade policy wonks like us like. But, <laughs> but when it comes to the real world, is it applicable? There's a very, a very recent uh, UN Women UN this, a study that says that it may take up to 300 years to achieve full gender equality. 300 years. Uh, so we need to speed up progress and, and, and I think that's why this, this Congress is a, is a very concrete example on how to approach the research community, the policy makers community to propose solutions, to anticipate risks, to propose policy solutions and to move from advocating for rights to actually ensuring rights. Mm -hmm.